Hey, it's Shannon Popkin welcoming you to day two of the Christmas 5C challenge. And today we're focusing on no complaining. Complaining is when we express dissatisfaction or pain or uneasiness or uh, resentment or grief over something that we see as wrong. You know, we're finding fault in something else. And so, you know, when my heart is craving control, there's just something really gratifying about complaining. <laughs> Have you noticed that? Like when I want control, like all I want to do is complain. Um, and I think the logic behind that, you know, that connection between wanting control and complaining is how are things ever going to change if I don't complain about it? Right. So I see something that's not the way that I would like, and I'm going to complain because I want things to change, but this is a lie because, um, the truth is things are far less likely to change if I complain um, and things are far more likely to, to change if I stop complaining. For instance, I'm going to give you an example about <laughs> my husband's driving. So I don't know what it is about the Christmas season, but we always seem to be in the car more together um, than at other times of the year. Usually in a week, you know, if we go out on a date, maybe or go to church. Those are the only times that we are in the car together. And often we'll just meet somewhere too, but Christmas time we're in the car a lot. Like we're going to events together or, you know, like we had a, an awards assembly thing for my son the other night we had to, we were going to shop for something together. So we're in the car a little bit more often. And we also all always seem to be running late at Christmas time. I mean, I think we're kind of always on the late end of the spectrum, but um, <clears throat> we're always worried about being late. And so when I'm the one who is stressed about being late, then I'm complaining because he's driving too slow. And when he's the one who's stressed about being late, then I'm complaining because he's driving too fast. And so it's like almost every time as we're sliding around on the slick Michigan roads, there are just a lot of things that I would like to say about my husband's driving. I have all of these complaints um, and just the other day I was, uh, I gasped as he was trying to pull, pull around somebody on the highway. He sped up and I was like, Oh, and you know, I told myself this was an involuntary reaction, but really the truth is that I, my complaining had been building up in my heart over the miles, right. Um, that we had already passed and complaints happen in my heart, not just in my mouth. Um, and so my husband definitely considered the gasp <laughs> as a complaint because he immediately started defending his, uh, his driving. And, um, you know, there's this time when our daughter was two and Ken pulled out on the highway and he's, and she, from the back seat, she's just like little two-year-old. She goes, Ken, what are you doing? You know, and I just had to laugh because she sounded exactly like me. She had heard her mama file those complaints time after time. And so then now she felt like she could file the same complaints. And you know what I'm realizing? Yeah, I've been telling that story for a long time. And honestly, look at the change that the complaints have produced. Zero nada, no complaints. He's still doing the same. He still drives the same way. And so all of my complaining has had zero effect on his driving, but it has had an enormous effect on our relationship. So when I nag and gasp and point at things, and if I'm honest, like we're not going to die. Right. Um, or if we are, it's probably not because of his driving. Um, the complaining, it does not motivate husbands or others, you know, coworkers, our kids, our um, parents, our siblings, it doesn't motivate people. Complaining doesn't motiv motivate anybody. And by continuing to complain, it's sort of like criticism. I think complaining and criticizing our cousins <laughs> and both of them uh, deplete the influence that we have with other people. So I, I know what you're thinking though. You're like, okay, am I just never supposed to ever express my displeasure or disapproval? And there may be times. Yeah, there are, there are times, especially, you know, in a work environment, like you have to, um, express like when something isn't up to standards or, um, but I think that 
there should be, you know, a time set aside where you're noticing a pattern and you're working with a husband, a child, a coworker, whatever. Um, and you're, and you set aside some time to talk about a pattern you see, not just this reactive complaining. Can you see how the reactive gasping and complaining, this is like a control tactic. Can you see the connection with that? Because really, why are we complaining? It's isn't the complaint like it, there's a reason that we're complaining. So here's what I'd love for you to be thinking about the next time that a complaint is like welling up in your heart. You've been, maybe it's in the car, your husband's driving or, or your child is doing the same thing or your coworker, you know, you might not be complaining in your mouth, but you're complaining in your heart. Um, so ask yourself these questions. Why am I pointing out this fault? Why do I want to express this displeasure? And what am I hoping to accomplish? Often the answer to some of those questions are control. You know, I'm pointing this out because I want to control this person. Um, I'm expressing my displeasure because I want to get control or I, what, what do I want to accomplish? I want to be the one in control. Um, I feel like I'm losing control. I, um, I want to take back control. And, you know, as I'm filing these complaints time after time, think about how you feel when somebody is constantly complaining about you. I have to say I was driving one time and I, we happened to be giving, um, some people a ride. I can't remember what the situation was. I think there was a car that was broken down or something, but as I'm driving, um, it was like raining a little bit on and off and I would put my wipers on and then it would stop raining. And the man who I did not even know in the front seat kept saying like, can you please turn off those wipers? It's driving me crazy. I was like, Oh my goodness. I did not like to be the one that he was. I felt like he was being controlling of me. You know, he was filing his complaints and I was irritated with that man, you know, a stranger. Um, and, and really, what do we do when someone's complaining about us? Like we roll our eyes and, you know, we tune them out. I was like rolling my eyes at this man, uh, complaining about my windshield wipers. And, but here is what I want you to know. There is one place that you are to file your complaints. It's with God. Does that surprise you? Uh, God wants to hear our, our complaints. Um, Psalm 142, two says, I pour out my complaints before him. I tell my trouble before him. It is good and right for me to bring my control craving frustrations to the one who actually is in control. Um, and so when I do this, when I lay down my complaints at his feet, I acknowledge two things. First, that I am not in control. And second, that he is, and God is honored when I choose to voice what I'm grateful for instead of what I'm complaining about. Um, annoys me. Psalm 69 30 says, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with Thanksgiving. So when I praise instead of complain, I magnify God. I make him bigger. Uh, I, I bring glory to his name. So just, uh, recently when my husband and I were in the car on the way to drop off a Christmas gift, we were bringing it to a woman, a needy woman from our church. And so there we are in the car bringing a gift from our church. And, um, he took a turn more sharp, sharply than I would have liked. And so instead of reacting, I started praying. And I said, Lord, you're the one who's in control and I'm going to trust you and I'm going to praise you instead of complaining right now. And, you know, I just, I want to thank you for the husband that you've given me who serves at our church, who is invested in caring for others. I mean, he's taking time out of his busy schedule to bring a gift to a widow in our church. And, um, and so I just praised God for my husband and I turned on the radio and the song was, Oh, come, uh, Oh, come all ye faithful. And so it was remarkably peaceful in the car <laughs> on uh, that little journey. And so we even had fun together and here's, so here's what I want you to think about. Um, where are going to be the times that you're most likely to complain about something this week? Um, maybe in the car with someone, maybe when you're working with a particular person, maybe it's when your kids a certain point in the day, when is it going to come and how are you going to choose not to complain? And, um, 
I would love to hear how God makes a difference in your life during this five C challenge. So we're on day two and I hope it's going well. Um, no criticizing, no complaining. We'll get to the third one tomorrow.